Hello, hello, hello. What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the Ship It Show, another fresh, brand new episode. And it's going to be an exciting one. We're going to be diving into the world of Drawn Together, right, Tara? You starred in that show, which I'm just finding That's out amazing. all kinds of new things because I've actually never seen this show just because I never watched barely anything, not even my own stuff. So <laughs> I, I, I'm really excited to learn more about this amazing show. I remember seeing the billboards and, and the, the energy that I got from the billboards. And stuff. I've never seen anything like it, so it's going to be much shorter. Than <laughs> Well, it was a show way before its time. It's an animated version of the real world, and they explore all kinds of relationships, all kinds of characters. And this is such an interesting show to dive into, just even as stories and, and regaling all of the amazing things that happen with this amazing group of people. So we're excited for this show. Well, it just it just seems like the ultimate ship show. It seems like the whole thing is just kind of shipping. The whole like, show is it? a giant ship, right? Everybody yeah. hooked up with everybody, just like on a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> With Greg and Tara. We have a lot of great guests on the show. We have uh, several members of the cast, and we have the creator, writer, creators, Matt and Dave. Um, so it's going to be just a wild ride. Please join us. We have so much fun on this episode. Welcome to the show. All right, all right, all right. We don't do this Okay, hi, everybody. So we did. Hi! We did not- we did not vote on this ship i just really wanted to do it so (laughs) because i love my drawn together people so much i miss this show so much so we're gonna start by introducing everybody and telling every you tell everybody where they can find you on social and we're just gonna go i'm just gonna go clockwise around my face on the zoom so we'll start with you abby so just tell us who you are where you can find you on social media who you played on the show hi i'm abby mcbride i played <clears throat> Ling Ling on the show <laughs> Drawn Together. <laughs> obsessed with the show Drawn Together. Not as obsessed with my character anymore, but I miss all of you dearly. You can find me on Instagram at Insta Abby McBride. You're super yeah. funny on Insta. I love all the stuff with your daughters. You're so cute and musical and adorable. Thank you for joining us. Okay, Jess, you're up. I would be Jess Sarnell, or I would be if I could be, but I don't know how. And I played Captain Hero on this show, to my great pride and disgust. <laughs> and I, you can find me on Instagram, <laughs> Jess Sarnell underscore. I don't know what the underscore means, but it's there. You Greg know, Sipes, my co- co-star. That's who I have next. Say hi, Greg. Hello. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for being on the Ship It Show, the big love boat. This is going to be fun, because for me, I, I don't know a lot about John Together. I know everyone loves this show, but... I barely watch anything, so it's going to be fun for me to kind of catch up on... Uh, Wait, did you watch any of it to research for this episode? Did you watch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! All seven seasons. Wait, wait, wait. Who did I play? You're, I, don't, I, want to, I want to build the suspense for everybody watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's don't really tell them yet, the Tara. Don't tell them yet. No. For, the, for the rare few that haven't yeah. watched the show, for the rare few that haven't watched Drawn Together... We're gonna find right. out together who okay. is wonderful. All right, people. all right, Dave. I I got you next, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Jesser. I'm one of the people who created Drawn Together. Uh, I'm not really on social media, but if you have to follow me, it's Dove Jesser on Twitter. Mostly, it's me accidentally asking people to play words with friends with me. <laughs> 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 Pretty much every tweet, uh, and that's really it. I am nothing but proud of this show. I love you guys. I miss you guys. And I can't wait for your co-host to learn about the show. <laughs> yeah, well. Wait, wait, wait. Tell everybody. Saying, okay. I remember what? seeing ads for it. It looked cool. I'm just saying. Oh, good. I'm glad you saw the ads for it. Um, Dave, you forgot to tell everybody what you do. Or did I miss that again? Oh, I'm a, I created the show, which just means I was there when Matt thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Okay, okay, okay. We'll go to Matt next. Matt, I'm Matt Silverstein. I created the show with my uh, high school best friend, Dave Jester. Uh, and oh my God, seeing all you guys, this show was my favorite thing ever. And I loved all you guys, uh, working with you guys every day. And uh, if, uh, if I could go back in time to one moment, it would be when we were all together working on this show. Um, and you can follow me. I'm not on social media, but I am on Peloton. And you can follow me as Closet Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Closet of Dad on Peloton. <laughs> come, 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 ride with me. <laughs> Wait, did I not know? Did I not know that you guys went to high school together? 
No, you may not have. No, yeah, yeah we're, yeah. we're in high school. What a story. I don't, That's I don't so cool. think I ever knew that. Can you guys tell us a story about you meeting and how your creative sure. relationship? Sure, I'll, I'll give a quick story. We were uh, in high school. I was a senior. Dave was a junior because uh, I was really stupid. I was put in his physics class. <laughs> <laughs> the year before, I ran for student government president to be, and I, I ran as the mystery candidate. And I thought it was a fucking brilliant campaign. Nobody knew who I was. I hung up posters at night. Uh, I did my speech through a Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, oh, I story. like that. Yeah, is but this, I lost. Is this a real story? Is this a real story? <laughs> oh, no, totally true story. And so I lost. And it. Re- and I mean, oh my God, did it drive me crazy because I thought it was such a good campaign. Sure. Uh, so the next year, I'm not allowed to run again, so I needed a patsy. And so there's this <laughs> quiet kid in my physics class with the most bizarre hair you've ever seen. Thank and you. I'm like, dude, you're the <laughs> only loser dumb enough to do this for me. So, uh, and he didn't want to do it, but the next day he came into school and I had posters hung up all over school saying, Dave Jesser for president and mm. all this other shit. And um, oh, my name I, spelled, wrong. I spelled his name wrong. I spelled it just with two S's. <laughs> but then he started writing the speeches and started writing the posters and, uh, it was great. We were writing the funniest shit. We were laughing all the time and getting in trouble and doing this big production. Um, and so then we were like, well, this is fun. Let's keep doing stupid things together. Well, just to and be oh clear, I also, I also lost. So we thought, <laughs> let's take this success and <gasps> let's hold on to each other for dear life. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know what, guys? We ended up at Drawn Together. So it all and worked cool. oh, yeah. My God, that's a real story. I'm love yeah, that. That's a good show already. I love it so much. And so uh, so you became friends because you were both losers. And then how did you guys start <laughs> writing? <laughs> I think the same way, Tara. No one. <laughs> we wrote, well, we did that bit in high school. And then it wasn't until after college, we both were in New York City. And Matt was doing stand up and he needed someone to help and make his jokes slightly more racist. <laughs> <And> <laughs> was the guy. We actually had this fun. Yeah, yeah, tell that bit. Our favorite stand-up that Matt and I were writing was the first stand-up show he was going to do that I had helped write. And we were looking at all the jokes. Matt was like, I can't perform these. They're all horrible. They're all offensive. I'm just going to get in trouble. I said, you know what? You're 100% right. Sounds like the show, by the way. It sounds like Draw Together. Which was very much the show. So what we did is I lived on the third floor of a building. On the second floor was a woman named Cleo who was a dominatrix. And we hired her to come up on stage with us. I got down in my underwear and Matt was going to read off the jokes and he set it up by saying, we think these are (laughs) offensive. Matt, Dave thinks they're fine. I think they're terrible. If anyone's offended by a joke, raise your hand and this dominatrix will whip Dave. And she put like hands on my nipples and Matt would read a joke and people would gleefully shoot their hands up. And the more offensive the jokes, the more excited everyone became, the more I got whipped. And then we were allowed, never allowed to go back into that place. Yeah, that was it. Because they also Genius. serve food there. And apparently, <laughs> you can't, yeah, you can't be naked and whipped in front of food. Oh. So we got kicked out. <laughs> well, That's how we you started guys, writing again. Yeah. I, yeah. you got, every story is so fucking great. Like, you guys don't do anything without being ridiculous and hilarious. What was that talk show that you went on where you drank Epic Hack and made yourself oh. puke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think it was called like Fox Reality or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we um, oh my we God. went on this talk show to promote Drawn Together. And so we each did one drug and wouldn't tell the other what the drug was. So Dave, <laughs> ate, <laughs> so, so Dave ate like a, like a bunch of pot brownies. So he's out of his mind. And I take Epicac, which if you don't know, Epicac uh-huh. is a drug you take uh, if you've eaten poison that forces you to throw up. Yeah. So I took a ton of Epicac and we went on the air. Like, why? Why? Wasn't it with Kennedy? Oh my God, we're so desperate. So desperate. Just desperate. Comedy (laughs) Central was not promoting, Comedy Central didn't promote Drawn Together very well. And if you remember, Greg, I know you said you saw some uh, billboards. There was a billboard. (laughs) They put billboards up, but within a day I'd gone to see them. They were taken down because Trisha Heaton complained about them because uh, Tara's character. That's not a true story. That is a oh, true story. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. What happened? Tub, Tara's character, Princess Clara, and Foxy, uh, right. love, Free's character, were about to make out in a hot tub. Uh, Jess was in the back with a video camera. <laughs> Lingling was doing. Lingling was somewhere being racist. I remember seeing that poster. <laughs> and a day. She yeah, apparently yeah. drove by it with their kids and called the head of Comedy Central and took them down. So by the time we went to look at the billboards for our show, they were already taken down. 
That, yeah. oh, Dude, you guys, I, well, I caught it. I caught it. I was impressed. My, that's Yay. a crazy yeah. story. So, Just know, that then, was your first th threesome on the show. Yeah. You, you know what? The first of many. And you guys, you got to tell the story, you guys, David and Matt, about Comic Con and the thing you guys did. That's my favorite thing. Uh, when we went to Comic Con and the contest you had. Oh, where we oh, found Kevin, yeah, that was right? that was a that was a great idea, you guys. You you guys the idea was uh, we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let one lucky fan do a voice on the show. So the idea was at Comic Con. Uh, like five people handcuffed themselves to Dave Chesser. And then whoever was the last person handcuffed would get to do a voice on the show. Oh uh, so, so we brought up five people, yeah. they all handcuffed to Dave, and then I went to bed. I'm not gonna put up with this nonsense. So Dave, then what happened? So yeah. we, we walked around San Diego, it was after Comic-Con, and one by one people fell off, one guy got a call by his mom because he wasn't allowed out that late. Another guy almost passed out because he didn't have his medication with him. Oh, wow. <laughs> by the way, the last time we went to Comic-Con, he asked, he came up to ask a question at a panel for a different show and was like, hi, I'm one of the guys who was coming. <laughs> oh, he looked great. My. He looked great. And then it all came down to this girl, Caitlin Robrock, who outlasted everyone, did a sh uh, voice on the show is now the voice uh, after that, her first voice gig is now the voice of Minnie Mouse, right? Yeah, it was a, remar it was a Wait, remarkable thing. What? She, Yeah, she came in to Come do on. the voice and it was one of those moments where you're like, holy shit, this girl's talented. Like, we, I remember looking at her, yeah. like, let's give her, let's give her really another part. Let's, really so we gave her like two or three parts. And then I understand, and then like, we kept in touch with her. We've had her do other voices on things. And then I know Jess, you're an amazing, you're, this is honestly like, we may have had the most, deprived most evil show but the people behind it are truly the best people i've ever worked with and jess i know you reached out to her and you mentored her and she's had a remarkable career because of your tutelage well she's now the voice of Minnie mouse that's nice to hear that I, you know I, I didn't tootle I, you know I, I wish i could tootle but all i did you know it's it's really cool man we all get the opportunity out there on the road and stuff you know i see greg i see tara at cons all the time we get the opportunity to encourage people and sometimes man you meet some really really talented folks and I, i'm always just like dude just don't give up no matter what happens just keep trying and she really is man that girl's really really talented so awesome talented. Way to go. yeah that's an so insane great. What a story. i just i just remember yeah. that night like being stressed about going to the bathroom because like someone had to go and they were handcuffed to other people. Like <laughs> yeah, Dave, you had that problem, right? Somebody had to stay outside while you were in the urinal. Yeah, I was in I was in the stall peeing while Minnie Mouse had to be handcuffed to me outside the stall. Disney. Wow. Oh. I've never heard of stories like this ever, uh, a part of any cartoon. You know, as crazy there. as that is, not to just uh, I know this isn't drawn together, but Abby's first big acting role was when we worked on the Man Show. She uh, got to play oh, with Ron to Jeremy. That was yeah. your first big break, right, Abby? Yeah, we I, we we wrote a sketch where she was in a sketch with Ron Jeremy, and she had to have her head down by his crotch for a good two hours. Wait, right? Wait. You have what? to preface this. You have to preface this with the the name of the sketch. This was nineteen year old Abby. Like, I got a gig, mom. <laughs> written by these losers and and it was called let's consumer report reports will try your bride before you decide and wow right right was, right took sure bride I, st on I stand by that <laughs> so i had to like be cleaning or like on a treadmill with like expert we have mr clean and I don't know. and then there was a sex portion with ron jeremy where i had to like straddle him and Pretend I was having sex with him. Wait, the, the real Ron Jeremy? The real Ron Jeremy. And yeah. and we actually had to reshoot it because Daniel Kellison was very protective of 19-year-old P.A. Abby and said we oh. had to reshoot it. So it was just my head resting on Ron Jeremy's lap. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. Uh, horrible, yeah. horrible story. Abby, Abby, that should be the name of your autobiography, Resting on Ron and Jeremy's Lap. That's great. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. my gosh. Yeah, the, the um, theme okay. of this podcast seems to be things that didn't age well. Yeah. <laughs> like my girl. Well, well let, let's From go back. Outside. Let's, what? Greg, you got something to say, say about a show you I never just, saw? I'm just saying, I'm looking at the poster right now. <laughs> Again. And I'm like, this is this show is badass. Just the way it no, looks. it was fuck, it was fucking dope. Yeah. I think it's it's very like uh, you you're ahead of your time, but I, I know the show has a one hundred percent successful. But I'm just saying, this concept of bringing all the different kinds of characters into very one world cool. is like 
It's addictive. Yeah, thanks. It was great. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to watch more. I want to see more. I want to dive into it. it I mean, awesome. could we ever do more, guys? Could we? We we People we ask all the time. I think there's a you know depends who's in charge at Comedy Central, but they now are doing Comedy Central Studios where they're producing for other places, and they came, like I said, they came to us. We have to figure out a way to do this show that they wouldn't get in trouble for it. It's on CBS like All Access right now. Oh yeah, if you have CBS All Access, I recommend uh, watching it. I, and I think you should dive in. Uh, <laughs> episodes to look for, uh, The Other Cousin, I think is a brilliant episode. Oh, yeah. After School Special, right? Or a very special episode or- <laughs> Very special, very special. Uh, oh, that's great. Lost in Parking Space. Yeah, uh, love oh, Long uh, Yeah. A lot of them, especially Lost in Parking Space was based, you guys remember, uh, it was when Drawing the Other merch merchandise was supposed to come out. And it yeah. was not unlike the Billboard story. We got the call from Comedy Central. Next Tuesday, next Tuesday, merchandise is coming out. It's going to start at Hot Topic. And all the writers were like, at lunchtime, we took a break. We walked all the way down to the mall in Glendale. And we went to Hot Topic thinking like, oh, my God, there's going to be Captain Hero and Princess Clara and Toot in the windows. And there wasn't. It was all mostly South Park. Family guy. And family <laughs> and so we walked in and we looked around at the little busts and there was none there and then we looked at the shelves and we finally went to the you know the woman up front with all the goth make makeup we're like did you guys get any drawn together merchandise and she's like I, I, I maybe we got a new box of stuff in the back if you want to look <laughs> no, all the writers no like crammed into this little room and like looked through this box and on the bottom there was a Ling Ling t-shirt <laughs> which yeah, is wow. amazing uh, and that became an episode where, in the in the actual show, the person lured the drawn together characters into the back because they hated them because they were probably racist and kidnapped them, and it became a whole hostile a hostile show where they she tortured them. Uh, really <laughs> that's right. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, so many of the episodes came from a lot of the episodes came from real life stories. I love that. Uh, <laughs> and that says a lot about your real life. Really? Yeah, yeah. right. What? I have a new favorite show that I haven't even seen yet. This is rad. yeah. We know. We know you haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> wait, can you guys? Since our show is primarily about shipping and relationships, can you tell us how you came up with the characters and um, you know, I, the I mean, they 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 hook up like in the first in the very first episode, <laughs> but first like maybe for, first let's talk about how you came up with the characters and how you cast um our gorgeous cast and and what like just tell us about that process sure um well the show is in case you don't you're not familiar with it it's um like Greg, it's about like eight, not yeah, 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 Greg. Together. yeah. It's i barely eight. get to see my own shows there <laughs> <laughs> i'm way behind Hundreds it's about uh I'll give you, it's it's eight different cartoon characters from all over the animated universe stuck together put in the house to have their lives taped so yeah. it was sort of a, a parody of big brother in the real world yeah. with different cartoon archetypes um so dave and i love reality TV. We love Big Brother. We love the real world. So we took our favorite real world characters and then just sort of connected to who do they would be in the cartoon world. So there was this one character, I think it was on the real world. She was a, she's this Mormon girl and she'd been sheltered her whole life, very religious. And then she came into the house and was pretty much an alien and all of her views were outdated and, and, and Kind of racist. Yeah, because she and, met, she's like, I never met a gay before. I never talked to a black before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, so we're like, well, that. Well, who's that? Well, that's a that's a Disney princess who's been locked <laughs> in a castle. So we're like, okay, great. So let's do that. So that's and then what? Kara Strong is if you're gonna find any princess in the cartoon yeah. universe, it's Tara Strong. You know, yeah. because she's very, very sheltered and racist. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> very reserved, very reserved. <gasps> but we also needed her we also wanted our disney character to be able to sing and so tara was the perfect and only choice for and princess clara nailed it and fucking hilarious like it was like it was great because we write these things we don't know what's funny we listened to her now listen tara you know, there were other people competing for the role sure. there were? we heard yours and we were rolling we we're like <laughs> oh my god so because like a lot of people say like oh they're no no fucking comedy chops like holy shit Aww, so yeah and so it was amazing so we were like boom got that and then also yeah we uh, we had then two who yeah. you also voiced who was also yeah. another uh little dave you can give us a little background yeah, Dude's was, was sort of a 1920s black and white betty boop character who a lot like a lot also people in the real world they would come in and they would be think they were hot from their small town but they get into the real world <laughs> and realize they can't compete 
And mm. she decided instead of being the hot girl, she would be the bitch. Right. And Tara, <laughs> even though you are the sweetest person in the world, inside oh, you, you, there's this person <laughs> who I know if you let her out would be horrible. And that became no, Keith Bronstein, was this loud, aggressive, oh. brazen, overtly Amazing. hypersexual human being that <laughs> was a, just a whirlwind of nature. And I don't know, whenever you sang, you, you put away the Princess Clara saw, uh, voice and used the two Bronstein. It was just this overpowering, amazing voice. Uh, so she was a bitch in the show that caused trouble, you know, the devil on everyone's shoulder. Could we, could we hear a little bit of two? Do you still, do you, do you, you know, have a little two in you? I, I, I have to say my favorite toot moment is she's standing there so desperate to get laid. And she's like, doesn't anybody want to fuck me? And everyone's like, not me, not me, not me. And then there's two quite, not me. And and Clara, by the way, when I, okay, so this, this was, I don't know if you guys remember the story, but I had written an animated real world, world pitch. It was just a collective consciousness stuff. And I had, I had pitched it somewhere and pe someone said, oh, that'll never fly. That's not a good idea. And like a week later, your audition came in. I was like, oh, these wow. are my people. And I think I like oh. made up a song about Clara's turtle and like some yes. weird shit. I don't know. Well, and I, then, say, uh, I remember that. I was going to say, Tara's the only one who would come in with ad libs that Matt and I were like, oh, all right, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. Oh, you really yeah, know. you're gonna get us arrested. Yeah, you wrote a whole. I think the the the, the song episode was called uh, the first episode is called "Some Black Girl's Tongue." Yeah, some black and chicks tongue. Some black, black chicks tongue. So black chicks tongue. And I think you wrote a second verse. You came in. I think you wrote a second verse to it that was so filthy. That was so uh -huh. evil. It was brilliant. But uh, yeah, no, the FCC would not put up with that nonsense. That's how we knew uh, you were our people because you made us, yeah. you made us uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then uh, so let's move on. So okay. then we have a uh, we have a uh, Captain Hero. Now Captain Hero is based on a character, and I forgot who it was. But he was on the real world. He was a, what, your your quintessential back rub guy. Like he'd find a girl crying, and he'd be like, "Oh, baby, I'm the sensitive guy. Let me give you a back rub." And you know, <laughs> and like he's not that frat guy. That uh, his game is to find a girl who's very vulnerable, pretend to be sensitive, uh, just to get laid. Oh, yeah. We're like, well, that's well, let's take that and let's make that Superman. <laughs> like, we'll save a girl, but only so he can quickly grab, cop a feel as she's falling from the building, you know? By the way, it's not oh, unlike okay. if you watch uh, The Boys. It's a lot of those superheroes yeah. now on that show. And then we found Jess Harnell. Well, actually, Jess helped yeah. us with yeah. the pilot. He helped us get the yeah. show picked up. We knew him before this. And, I mean, he could do anything. And Captain Hero, again, much like Tara, it's so not you. But <laughs> I think... Yeah. I, we think the people who are best at those sort of depraved characters are people who are actually good people. Because one, it's fun to make them say horrible things. Mm -hmm. And then it, it makes it seem like, oh, somehow this guy and ultimately Captain Hero devolved into someone who had sex with dead deer in the forest. <laughs> uh, by the way, I think wow. it's more likable than the guy who cops a feel of the girl he saves. Uh, <laughs> it, it made him, you li somehow you like the guy who liked the dead deer. So I, I don't know if you remember, Jess, if you were nervous about doing this character, but it, you did it perfectly. Yeah. No, I don't, you, were, I, you know, listen, man, first of all, I was such a fan of you two because I, I, I forget how our paths crossed initially, but I, I had a little cartoon I developed with the great Charlie Schlatter, who's a great friend of all of ours and, you know, really, really talented guy. And we were getting writer submissions, right? So we had, and maybe you guys remember, but I don't, we, we got connected with you two and you submitted a script that was oceans better than anybody else's script. And me and Charlie were pissing ourselves so and saying, true. this is the best thing we've ever seen. And then the network got hold of it and said, no, we want to get a guy who wrote Full House. And I'm like, oh God. <laughs> so, so, you know, but, but I never forgot you guys. So I went in there and you know, you told me about this thing. And I think on the initial thing, yeah. I could. I did all the guys' voices just for you to have. I think like, you did everybody. Yeah. Yeah, like an animatic, you know. And uh, but I was really hopeful. I mean, I, I speak on behalf of all my voiceover buddies who are here and and not here. You know, I don't get attached to auditions and thinking, oh man, I really want to get this and I hope I get this because you know it's the kiss of death. I tend to forget stuff as soon as I leave the room. This thing. I really, really wanted to get because I wanted to work with you two and nobody else had even been cast yet. And I ended up loving everybody in the cast as well. But I was like, 
Stop thinking about it, man. Stop thinking about it. If it's meant to be, it'll be. And sure enough, it was. And what's really funny, coming back to the con thing, is that now when people get in my line, I can always tell the drawn together fans because they look <laughs> they look different. They're <laughs> freaks. They're freaks. Well, oh, they're yeah. pretty, they're pretty hilarious cosplayers. I mean, oh, oh my God. I, I've seen some hilarious, hilarious shit. Me too. Oh, Me too. Well, and also, not, I'd love to see that. I have not seen. Oh them my God, they're amazing. great. So yeah. I mean, half of them are naked. But also, <laughs> Jess and Abby, I'm sure you'll concur. Like. It was also so fun to do an adult cartoon. Like most of us do kids stuff all day. So to get in a booth and say fucking shit and sing about making out was like, oh, it was like so much fun. No, but I don't know, Tara, I don't know if you had this experience, but every time we did table reads for this show, I would go, yeah. that they'll, they'll never. They're, and I'd even sometimes yeah. I would say to David Matt, I'd go, Hey man, that that one joke, dude. That's that's pretty intense, man. And they'd be like, they'd always say the same thing. Oh, that's probably not gonna get in. It probably won't even get in. <laughs> and it always got in, right? And, it uh, me. Yeah. and so the the real thing was though. We, so we're saying all this stuff that's so outrageous. And yes, Tara, I agree with you. It is really fun, and I like the fact that you know, in my the arc of my career, I've played you know the lovable snowman on Doc McStuffins right next to playing Captain Hero on Drawn Together. It's just such a weird dichotomy, right? But when I remember when they, we did the Drawn Together movie and you guys came to me and you said, we're doing a movie. And I said, we are? And you, you said, yeah. And I said, why? And they said, so we can say all the stuff we couldn't say on the TV show. And I'm like, what the hell can we say on the TV show? And we did the movie and I found out what we uh, heard. Yeah. The show. No, that, that's, oh. that was, yeah, that's a, that was an experience of like, okay, yeah, now that's too far. Yeah, that was not, that was. You were, you were, I mean, you had a whole relationship with a dead woman. I know. <laughs> you, 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 you went back and you had to meet yeah. the parents. It was, it was, a, it was a disaster. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, not, not a good, not a good Another, one. another character the on the show, which is interesting, be, now looking back, it's a character we could do least, was Ling Ling, because it was a Pokemon character. Oh, Asian, God. Basically a little Asian fighting monster, voiced by the whitest person we could find in Abby McBride. Yeah. Who no killed it, by the way. Yeah, Abby, we've known since when she was working with Ron Jeremy back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> she had this, uh, she had this uh, little sketch group, a sketch group, and she did this character. It was a drunken New Orleans like lounge singer. Yeah, what was it, Abby? What did you do? What was the what was the character? Her name was Florida. Uh, <laughs> she was a hammered. It was kind of like a Marty and Elaine for those LA people. That oh yeah, know. sure. Uh, What's the Dresden and Los Feliz? There's this like uh -huh. standing couple that play and they're old and crazy. It was kind of like a riff on them. And and she was this drunk lounge singer that you couldn't understand a thing she was saying. It was just like, <laughs> you know, nonsense. Ling Ling was the most lovable character. We, when Comedy Central made us do focus testing, uh, which oddly was season two because they didn't like the direction of the show and they were trying to prove to us <laughs> that it wasn't the right direction. We were so nervous, like, why are you testing this episode? Because it had some pretty crazy stuff, but every time Abby got on the screen and started talking, no matter what the jokes were, you could see those dials just shoot up. And I remember with your story, Jess, the dials would shoot up, but then as you got creepier, they would shoot <laughs> <laughs> a different direction. Yeah. So you yeah, and yeah, your yeah. voice, you and your voice, the dials all shot up, but what we made you do <laughs> brought you back down a little. Occasionally, yeah. We got a hold. They weren't supposed to show it to us. We knew an assistant. We got a hold of the testing, and they said it tested better than any show on Comedy Central. Everything was through the roof. And when like ninety five percent or something, it was, cr it was like yeah, it, was it was crazy. crazy. Everyone loved it or really loved it, except for one woman. And I'm not. We went to the testing. You could see the one old lady in the back who. <laughs> <laughs> and when we brought up testing and i remember the comedy central saying oh it's just testing it doesn't mean anything <laughs> but, uh, but abby yeah, you're you just your voice was amazing no matter what oh, we made you do so funny yeah, i want to talk a little bit about why you think we we weren't like 10 episodes 10 seasons later and blah, blah blah but first i want to hear from abby like what you thought when you first got the audition and and how it is so cute what you did and, and how you made up, like you made up most of your dialogue. It was yeah. improv, right? It was yeah. totally improv. It was really fun. I would read it in English and then I would just do the gibberish afterwards. And it was, <laughs> it was super fun. I don't know. I was so like, it was really my first, you know, one of my first big jobs. And it, I feel like, so it was, um, 
I didn't know that there was so much rejection in the world yet. <laughs> now I can tell you all that. Yeah. But, but at the Aww. time, I was like, oh, you do a pilot, and the, these guys brought me in to do it. And I, I was just like, oh, yeah, it'll go. That, isn't that how Hollywood works? And then it did. So wow. then... So then I was really let down later in life. <laughs> yes, oh, 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 but work, you we were are. so cute. You were oh, so sweet. You know right. It was so lovable. Like no matter what the hell you were doing, it was just so cute. And we were like, I remember just like watching her, like wondering what's gonna come out of her mouth. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, it was so me too. random oh. and adorable. Thank yeah. you. I love you were so brilliant, why, Abby. why do you guys think like people ask all the time at cons? I'm sure you get this. Are there gonna be more? Why did it get canceled? Like yeah. why do you guys ultimately think it was such a brilliant idea? Greg's right on one thing. It was before it's time. I agree. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. like, and uh, like, even though the characters are irreverent, much like something on Family Guy or something else, like why they were lovable. And uh, why do you think it just got canceled? When I, it here, here, there's a lot of different theories. We were the number two show on the network, um, which is yeah. always kind of like, well, why? If we're the number two show, I guess that means that's, that's pretty good, right? right we're not, we're not yeah. Seinfeld. We're not, we're, we're, we're the show they put between Seinfeld or Friends, where they had that, it was great. Like that, that should last a long time. Yep. Um, two stories we've heard was um, South Park just recently got in trouble for an episode they did where the Pope, I guess had, uh, the Virgin Mary had her period on the Pope's face. Mm -hmm. And I guess that upset a lot of people, a lot of Spencer, a lot of Spencer. But remember, it was right, that was right when Viacom bought out Comedy Central. Yeah. Now there's this so, new uh... conservative board and right when they bought it out, the, there was all these headlines where South Park upsets an entire religion, half the world, by the statue of the Virgin Mary pissing on the Pope. And I'm sure, apparently a lot of these board members are like, wait, what did we just buy? We're Viacom. Yeah. yeah what's going on? We want to see what's on the network. Now the network's like, oh, uh, we're not going to sell out South Park. I mean, that's, that's the number one show. They're making us the most money. Why don't we show them a clip reel of Drawn Together? Oh. So apparently the censors put together uh, a highlight reel of all the worst moments of drawn together history, which um, a guy, which I also heard was hilarious. <laughs> um, and, uh, and supposedly they played this for the, the, the investors, the board of Viacom, the old, old white men. And, uh, and they were appalled. And I think that was, <laughs> that might've been the, the beginning of the end. Now the uh, other story, just a little, go, just a little the, the s &P person that we dealt with, who also dealt with South Park, let us get away with obviously a lot. And she said she had to go to this board meeting and simultaneously sit there and defend things that were kind of indefensible if you didn't know South Park. She's like, I, I had to be offended, even though it was the funniest clip reel <laughs> anyone had put together, because it was the greatest hits of things she probably should have stopped. But you can't when we're following South Park, because they do, obviously they do just as crazy of a stuff, but way crazier. I think yeah. they were, well, we were they no, totally. And we were, and we would be relentless with the censors. Like we were sort of at that age where if you told us no, well then we have to do it. Yeah. And that's really what it came, whether or not it was smart or right or good for the show or good for humanity, that didn't matter. You said, no, we're doing it. And th that had that sort of that punk rock spirit uh, that, that I think which made the show so special, but um, also got it canceled. Now the other story that I'd like to get out there, don't know if it's true. Love to love to tell people this. We, uh, we had a friend who was dating Trey Parker, who supposedly hated the show, was supposedly in renegotiations for his contract, and said he did not want to be. And that's ultimately, if you do watch the schedule, we were moved away from South Park for no reason, even though wow. we were doing great. Wow. Supposedly, uh, Trey said, I, I do not want to be on the same network as Drawn Together. And, uh, and he got it canceled. That's another story that I heard from his ex-girlfriend, wow. who's a little loony. She's a loony lady. Best so I know. Wow. So I we don't know. But you know what? I love telling people that because that's the story I want to believe. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that I believe that we were hilarious and weren't we like the number one college rated show at that time or something? The day we got canceled, the day we got canceled, the New York Times uh, had a giant article how we, now they just put Nielsen boxes in college dorms, we beat football. We were like the biggest yeah. show on colleges. Uh, but yeah, in fact, the main thing, one of the main things I hear when I'm on the road is that, you know, because you always hear about the other shows and stuff like that. People say, you know, you were my childhood. You got me through my childhood. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Drawn together every single time. You got me through college, man. You got me through college. <laughs> and I'm like, so in other words, you were too drunk to really understand what you were watching, but you dug it. They said, yes, exactly. But, you know, the point is that it was hugely popular with college people. Man. There's probably a bunch of people who loved all the voices you do and all the shows, and you guys are amazing. And the minute they, 
started drinking and getting high, they're like, oh, we love you. <laughs> Drunk <laughs> we love you together. No, I get I get a lot of love at cons, don't you, Jess? And do people dress up as Captain Hero? They do. And uh, yeah. let, let's just say, as Rob Paulson sometimes says, spandex is a privilege, not a right. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they're, they're dressed up in their Captain Hero finery and God bless them and they're rocking and they're doing the best that they can. But, yes, I, I see all kinds of people cosplaying and it's really sweet. And, you know, in its own way, this thing made just as beautiful, you know, as, an impact as the sweeter nature shows because it just made people laugh, you know, appropriate or not, politically correct or not. It was funny at that time. And, man, people dug it, you know. Well, listen, we, we did a lot of weird shit and I think some of it was misunderstood. But by those who understood it, got the spirit behind it. And they're. It was. It was a. It was. It was a very inclusive show, very pro gay. I mean, everybody <laughs> fucked everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was. It was uh, did you did you know that going in? Did you know going in everyone was gonna hook up with everyone? Well, yeah, because Dave blew a dude uh, <laughs> when he was a kid, and we were all we were all pretty loosey goosey. So yeah, we figured eventually that's gonna happen. And the fact that you know, I actually just recently got some. Uh, somebody reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, You're just getting lost over that. Dave, Dave, <laughs> oh. Dave, you went quiet there for a second. I'm sorry, you yeah. went, you went <laughs> reminiscing. It was love and romance. And let's not Matt make something beautiful again, something <laughs> Two 10 year old dudes exploring each other's body before Jew before Hebrew school on a Sunday. It is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. And just so you know, I think it's lovely. That's why Matt uses his gigantic microphone just so I relive my trauma yeah. every time I see it. <laughs> and I relive live my jealousy. Because I just that, that's why I bring it up so often. Why couldn't have I been the boy that you blew, like, Dave? Oh, uh, before wow. Hebrew school. Before How did Hebrew you guys school? get through your recording sessions? We it was pretty you... hard. We I mean hard. We <laughs> laughed a lot. Oh, wow. I mean yeah. a lot. And and we did do table reads. I missed that. You know, not every show does it and I think it's a mistake. I, I love uh, first table read when you first see everyone who booked whatever part is always so fun but then to do them every week like an on-camera show and and even though we were talking about a reverend crazy shit like it was you know it was it was like i don't know it just felt like a real fucking show that everybody cared about and everybody put their all into and the music was amazing like the music was oh amazing god, so good. oh my god how did you guys did you always know that music was going to be such a big part of the show yeah, we did. I mean, just by being fans of cartoons uh, and Disney characters and everything, we always wanted music to be part of the show. We hired this guy, Evan Schletter, who worked on Mr. Show before us. And he was someone like you, Tara. We would write the original version. We would punch it up and we would send him the songs and he would add to it. Sometimes we had to take out what he added to it. Because you also would go too far. You would also but go you know, I, got, I, got, I got a question on those lines. Dave and Matt, did you guys actively search for, when you were casting, did you search for people who you knew would be good singers, or was that a happy accident? Happy accident. Not really? Okay. really? And, it, and it was amazing because we just had never been involved in any kind of musical. And so when we would see Jez, when you sang, or when Tara, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh a Cree, and Abby to a much lesser extent, when me. you guys sang... <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> you and we, I mean, it was like, like, oh, we were, we were, we were the, like, what a special thing. We were with greatness. Oh, it was amazing. Man. It was, was so much fun. And it was good music too. I mean, hilarious. Oh, hilarious. You know, um, we're not, I don't want to forget Cree because I'm doing a special segment with her and a cosplayer. So can you tell us also about um, writing and casting Foxy? Oh, so we oh, well, Cree, oh, was, Cree was, from the moment we started, we had the idea and I remember bringing Jess in. He was like, oh, for this character, Foxy, you need to get Cree. Oh, yeah. we were like, all right, who's um, Cree? No, no. And no, no, you I also. No, you pretty said much, right. You said you know what, Sorry, Tara. Pretty much everyone we spoke to, I mean, you were a huge okay. advocate, <laughs> but everybody, and who, who's your agent? Your agent also, everyone, PPM. guys, yeah. stop fucking around, hire Cree. I just remember you were talking about it. She hadn't been cast yet. She's a super hot black girl that sings, that's sexy. And like, I, I was like, this is Cree. Like, it was such a no-brainer. And then obviously she was... <laughs> the perfect, like nobody else could be. But it, I don't know if you, but you know, so we had her audition. She didn't come in to audition for us. She auditioned with her agents and she sent in a tape and it was honestly terrible. Whatever direction. I remember you because you played it for me. I said, play it for me. And you played it for me. And she did it as a little girl. And I said, her agent didn't give her all the information. Wow. Bring her back in. So it was me. Her, oh, you to bring her yeah. back in. So we had her, brought her back in. We gave them the direction. This is an adult comedy, be adult. And we got another 
uh, audition, and it was again terrible. Her agent, she did a child, even though it was an adult, she did a kid's cartoon voice. There was none of the Cree sexiness, none of the Cree real. And so what we did was we sent over the only part of the audition that said, hey, this is Cree Summer auditioning for Foxy Love, which she did at Cree. We sent that over to wow. the network and they were like, perfect, she's in. Because you yeah. kept telling us, both of you guys told us, she's right, she's just getting bad direction. We couldn't get her in to give her direction. I and then, never oh that. my God, was she right. Oh, oh, my, mean, God. oh, my, oh my God. God. Yeah. Like, so brilliant. Yeah. So she's funny. So, that uh, she, like, we would, like, every line, like, we'd write a line, and then she'd be like, no, that's not how Fox would say it. This is how Fox would say it. <laughs> and everybody would be rolling. Like, fuck, she's just, again, the comedy chops on you guys. She's ridiculous. super, she's so brilliant. I, this is going to sound really crazy, but I will be walking around singing Black Chick's Tongue. Like, <laughs> just like, it's a great I, and like it was also such a great of animation piece of animation history like two girls making out like it yeah. was like it was super hot and it was super fun and brave and uh, well that first episode sort of set the bar for what the show was going to be yeah. Terry, don't you think it's like from the get go, like, <laughs> yeah. this is what this is so either turn it all on or downhill it from here. <laughs> I, I gotta share with you guys a really funny story and i don't know how many of you know it but it's a table read story this is one of my favorite anecdotes from drawn together ever so you know for those who don't know out there you know table reads are when the cast and the producers of a show and the network sometimes get together and you read through the script and they take notes as to what you know what gets laughs what's funny what doesn't work etc etc right well you know they don't commonly do them for cartoons so it was really cool and i walk in i see my buddies you know the, the cast is there and matt and dave are there and all these other people I'm like oh this is great right so the show at this point when this happened was already starting to do well the ratings were really good so they were treating us very nicely so i walk in and this this lady walks over to me and she goes hey jess you know loving this show great work i said oh thank you man that's really nice and she goes can i get you anything and i said i said no 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 you know i, I can I'll, I'll get whatever it is she goes no i'm happy to what is there anything you'd like and i'm like oh Okay, maybe like a you know a bagel and some orange juice. So she goes, okay, right on it, right? So she comes over, she brings me her orange juice and a bagel. I'm thinking, oh, this is good. This is what it might be like to be a TV star, right? So the next week, see, she, I walk in, she sees me again. She goes, bagel and orange juice. I go, that's right, this is fantastic. So the week after that, you know, I'm talking to career terror or something, and I see her and I point down at the table and I'm like, where's the bagel and orange juice, right? So Sue brings it to me, and somebody walks over and they go. What's going on? I said, oh, you know, that's so and so. She brings me my big orange juice. They go, she's the vice president of Comedy Central. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm like, her. She was like my PA. I'm like, yeah, get me my bagel. Man. And apparently, she's like the president of the network. So there you have it. Oh, that's something I would do. That's something I would do for sure. Yeah, it was me. It was definitely me. I love that. Oh that's my yeah. god, that's a great. <laughs> Pretty good, right? I yeah, brilliant. So, yeah. so, so then much. we also so we should talk about the rest. Let's just hit the rest of the cast there. Yeah. We got Cree, and for, uh, we also had um, uh, yeah. James Arnold Taylor, oh, heck who yeah. played uh-huh. Wildor Sockbad, the innocent, the all-purpose, anything character who, uh, <laughs> who a lot of times was the heart of the show. Loved him. Um, I think, I think we made him say things we probably shouldn't have made him. say. Oh, I think so too. I think he probably did. <laughs> yeah, you know what, uh, and, and I mean, James, you cannot get a nicer human being no, than, no, than James. James is so not like that at no, all. Like, I'm not, surprised no. he actually said a lot. Me too. Because yeah, yeah. there's a little bit of that in all of us. There's uh, none of that in him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing, well, I would say, though, every actor we had, there was always, the, you know, except for maybe Tara, there was always <laughs> one area they didn't want to touch. And that's oh no! I we... I refused. I refused the Anne Frank joke. All right, there we go. <laughs> what was the Anne Frank joke? I know Jack Spotnik for certain areas because he, he's a gay man who he was he was cautious of. Obviously, James he had areas he was cautious of. Abby, I'm trying to remember if you had nothing. Line. Abby might not have had a line. I Jess, like remember you... your line was yeah. at, Jess would not say anything that had to do with the devil. Cause he was like, I'm not fucking with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, man. No. I'm not gonna say that. that flag, no, man. Yeah, yeah. And then we had Adam Carolla oh, as the yeah. voice of Spanky Ham. Now we worked with Adam over on Crank Anchors and on the Man Show, and um, it's almost like he wasn't really part of the show. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> really, yeah. He, he would he would stroll in and be like, hey, uh, he'd always do the same thing. He'd come in there. We'd have to listen 30 minutes of his nonsense where he'd be like, mm. uh, well, who, who am I? Am I Cartman? 
I think I'm, I think I'm Homer. And then it would actually sometimes get to the point where like, I would just do his voice. I would just, do, I'd be frank. Like, like, you again, always like, just, did it for table reads and stuff, right? Did yeah, because I don't want to show the table reads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he is the reason the show actually got picked up. It was right when the man show and Crank Anchors were going off the air and they wanted to maintain a connection with Adam. And we said, Adam, will you do a voice? He said, yeah, I'm sure why not. And then uh, he, he did it. And he did a great job. He was brilliant. Yeah. And I, I love, love him to death. But yeah, it was really, it was honestly like, he was that like, the brother who went off to college and we never really saw anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Call it occasionally. I, I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's true. Yeah. Did Adam play? A spanky ham. He was a download internet cartoon. He was a, he was just a crass internet yeah, cartoon. Yeah, very crass, yeah. Jo Greg, the show's called Drawn Together. It's yeah, about know, like I'm, an animated I'm, real world. I'm just <laughs> following along it's as we're talking. kind of cute, Greg. Right? Yeah. And then Jack Plotnik. I thought I was hoping he was going to stop by today. I know. Where's uh, Jack? He played Xander, and boy, is he a fan favorite. I get so much love for oh, him. Oh, uh, my God. He, the, uh, the... he was, he, he was a, uh, an, an adventure. He was like Link from Zelda. Yeah, um, yeah. And 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 the start of the series, he's on a never-ending quest to save his girlfriend. Girlfriend. But he finds out that he's gay, and <laughs> boy, he brought so much heart to it and made everything so funny. Uh, like, yeah, that character would have fallen flat without him. That, by the way, is the most hilarious cosplay from this show I've ever seen. The Xander oh, yeah. cosplay. Yeah. I remember. I think. Wait, Jess, were you with me at Dragon Con? There was this guy, like, pretty much naked, with like something cover his, covering his woo, -woo and he was he was Xander. I was like, like, but he was <laughs> naked. I, I I think I think I was, and unfortunately, you can't unsee that. But yes, I I, I yeah. recall. A lot of, like we did an episode about him about him coming out or, or or coming out to himself. We did a story where my favorite episode is the after school special where he has to come out to his parents. So he wants the 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 housemates to role play. Everyone's going to play a part in his family and he's going to practice coming out. And then nobody breaks character for the entire episode. <laughs> and it goes completely off the rails, but it had such a great heart. And he was so... Jess as Captain Hero plays his mom. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Tamara as Toot plays his dad, just to be confusing. <laughs> and when he comes out, they throw him out of the house. And then even though he's thrown out of the house and living on the street, trying to make money by giving hand jobs in a back alley, oh, he'll come no. back to the house and Jess as the mom and Tara as the dad are still having fights about how they treated their son. <laughs> if you remember, you go to the bar and someone calls your son gay and you get mad and you get into a fight and you guys have to go track him down and he's hiring Asian businessmen played by Lin Ling. To, I, I think the PR? I don't remember now. What oh, yeah. the and, 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 it, and it does feature the single best performance of Tara you've ever, I, 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 in the entire series, the scene where you're as two as the dad in a trucker hat driving a, a pickup truck, and then Princess Clara, who's yes. a schoolgirl, she's walking it. along, and then you're like, hey, come on in the truck, and, and, it's, it's, and, he, and he's hitting <laughs> on you, and he's, it's the creepy, and you, you're doing both voices. Yes, amazing. It is the, it's the most creepy, real, funny, <laughs> like the yeah. way you pulled this off, I mean, what a delicate role to, to molest yourself and make it real creepy and also funny, and you fucking nail it. Anybody who watches the after school special, watch that scene, and I mean, and just send her, her send an Emmy, send two yeah, Emmys. Yeah. There's, there's, there's something going on in that scene beyond Tara's remarkable performance playing these two completely different characters who do it so well that I always remember it. They're driving along, so, so. Tara as the dad picks up, you know, Clara as the cute babysitter who was hitchhiking home or whatever. Yeah. And they're driving along in the car. And Tara Toot turns on the radio and you hear, We're not this city, right? And she turns to Toot. She goes, You like Starship? And Clara goes, Who doesn't? And I'm like, that, that sums up the entire thing, right? There. Who doesn't love Starship, man? You gotta like that. <laughs> oh, okay. who my doesn't? God. That's so oh. funny you remember that. But yeah, that was, that, was that was a really remarkable, really remarkable, remarkable so performance. Cool. I Brilliant. thought we went crazy on Teen Titans Go, but this is a whole other level. Oh, it's no, a whole no, other no. level. Thing. This, this, this is so cool. I'm yeah. just super impressed. And it feels like the whole show is like a ship. It's like wish fulfillment. Anything you'd ever ever want to do, you, you did it in the show. Is there anything? I have a question, though. Is there, is there something you did not get to do on the show? Is there is there some oh, God. Is there something get to play out? An another season. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> At least. Yeah. Also, and also, we didn't get to make a show that my kids like as much as Teen Titans Go. Yeah. Aww. That's what's yeah. up. My yeah. kids like all your shows way better than. <laughs> my kids uh... are obsessed with Teen Titans, so.
Hey, shippers, we're going to have to cut this episode, but don't go anywhere. There's more. Part two next week. Next week. Tune into the Shipper Show. Subscribe, share. You know what's up.